I'm going to be talking to you about the impact of teamwork, skills on student creativity, a case of classroom educational program. I'm representing ICL Education Group. I am the director of research there, and I also am a senior lecturer in business management and innovation studies. Um, so let's have a look at what I'm going to be covering today. I'm going to start with the research objectives, the teamwork concept, research design, data collection method, Tuckman's model of team formation, and its application in this case study, and then Balban's nine team roles and its application to the case study, uh, findings, discussions, the team effectiveness process, and finally conclusion. So before I start, I would like to give you the background of the study or why, why did I engage in it? As an educator, I believe that teamwork is, is very important. It's one of the issues that um, all of us talk about. We have a lot of assessments that includes teamwork. And there is the issue of um, the free riders and the issue of the free loaders and the issue of the marking in the assessment and how to be fair. We are talking about lots of issues today about sustainability and fairness and poverty and immigration. And if we are not going to start with those students and arm them with the required skills, they are our future. They are the ones who are your colleagues. They are the ones who travel over the world and work. So teamwork skills is actually one of the main requirements in, in a work environment. And the key thing is how they can work collaboratively with each other. How can you want them to achieve, to become innovative, to become creative if they don't actually collaborate with their own ideas, with their efforts, and with their work? Hence, that project started. And I'm actually reporting to you about a real case study that happened with my students. I'll go in details uh, uh, with that. So the main objective is that I wanted to determine the impact if I use those two models that I've chose. The first one is Tuckman's model for team formation. There are four stages and we'll go through them, and Belbin's nine roles. These are roles that are assumed by the characters. Uh, and while they're working together in teams. I wanted to test and to see if they really um, follow those two models, how effective are they going to be? How collaborative are they going to be? What is the end result? How can they get creative and how we can have high performance? So there is lots, this is just to give you about the concept of teamwork. There is a myriad of research that has been conducted about teamwork and showing the differences between what's a teamwork and what's a group. And we all know that there are lots of differences, but the main aim, the main difference is actually the goal. If you're working in a team, all of you are working towards the same goal. So accordingly, you have to collaborate and work together. So this is the key thing. There are also lots of definitions that you are going to find the key word of collaboration and working together comes. I just chose a very simple uh, definition for you today. It says, uh, Kraft said that it's a small number of people with the complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, performance goals, an approach for which they are accountable for the final outcome. If they all succeed, it's for everybody. It's fruitful for everybody. If one does not work properly and they fail, they're all affected. So that is the key thing. So that affects actually the performance. And this is why this is one of the key skills that lots of researchers actually said it's a requirement for the working place. So briefly, what is the design of uh, this research? It is reporting, and DHSM is actually a diploma in health services management. It's a case study, and I had two of the classes, and um, I put the students into groups. I usually ask my students to choose their own team members. I treat them, they're adults, they can choose for themselves, because they have to go through all those models. 
So I ended up, the teams were between four and six maximum, no more than that. I ended up with 12 teams. And I went through all the phases and explained to them the models of uh, Belbin and of um, Hackman. So this is the overall design. So how did I collect the data? I used the leaderless group discussion in order to enable me to have in-depth observations of the students. And that concept um, gave me the opportunity to evaluate, to analyze, and to critique and watch them closely through all the different phases and how we'd be working and contributing with each other and watching the end results and watching all the activities in the classroom and assessing their final assessment. Um, and also, while I was looking at that, I had um, a list of 15 positive behavior and 10 negative behavior. And you are going to find it in the appendix at the end of the paper. So you would wonder, what do I mean by positive? Like, for example, how they respect each other, how they communicate with each other, how they give the chance for each other to work, how they build each other characters, versus negative ones, somebody cutting a person off, they are not giving them the chance to talk. They can have snidey comments, things like that. The list is in the appendix. So this is Tuckman's model of team formation. Um, originally, when Tuckman developed this model, it was in the mid-1960s. I think it was about 1965, approximately. And when he started it, it had only the first three um, stages. And then in the 1970s, he added the final stage. And I'll tell you the importance of that final stage, because in actual real life, lots of organizations miss that final stage, which is actually very crucial. So the first stage is the forming stage. And this is the stage where the team come together, when they start to understand and know each other. And all of them look a, a, proper, uh, they are um, having the best behavior in front of each other. Nobody is hurting anybody's feelings. And this is what we call the honeymoon period. And uh, so everything is sweet and lovely. OK? So at this stage, you will have the team is having the directions. They are starting to set what is the objective of the team? What's our goal? Where are we heading? Then after that, they move into the storming stage. And as the title says, this is where the honeymoon is ended, by the way. So they start having conflicts. They are people from different backgrounds. They are set in their own ways. And at that stage, they have to start having some structure. This is the time when they need to find a means of how to resolve their own conflicts and make it positive conflict, not a negative one. Then they start through the norming. This is when they settle down. These are written or unwritten rules and how they live by it. And at that case, I start asking, you have to have ground rules. All the team members have to have ground rules in order to be able to live smoothly later on. Once you finish all those three phases, then the actual action starts which is the performing stage where they have to do the real task. This is a process, and it has to go through those steps. If you miss one step, you're wasting really time. Then finally, once the job is done, it's the adjourning stage where they have to actually enjoy the fruits of all their labor. And that's the time we go out and celebrate and party. And this is the phase that I mentioned to you, that some organizations miss that. As employees, we would love, actually, to be rewarded, to be motivated, to be patted on the shoulder, well done, good job. These are the findings that I found out from um, utilizing the model. The, all the students, by the way, uh, went through all the phases. Uh, some of them had the leadership, uh, three, three of the 12, they were only having one leader all through, 
but all the rest, they had to rotate the leadership, and that had very good impact because it gave the opportunity for them to become to develop their skills in participating in the team. And also, the other thing is that they demonstrated a high level of participation and engagement in the class. Also, you, we can see from how they developed their logo and how they expressed themselves and from the team building exercise that they've done in the class, how creative in how they approached it. All the teams develop ground rules for respective teams, which is also having an effective team cohesiveness. So one of the rules, let me give you an example. Um, the students said that for themselves. If there is a meeting, some of the meetings said we'll wait five minutes or 10 minutes. And if somebody doesn't come, some the penalty was $5, $10, a lunch, a chocolate, a dinner, and they actually did it and they went through it. And they were the ones who did it themselves. This is just a few examples to show you the logos that they have done and created by their own hands. So each, if I take one of them to illustrate how meticulous they were. And when they wrote the word love, friendship, and loyalty, they said, this is our values. And when they put the two hands, they said, this is the important thing that the hands that's doing the job. And they said, we have put it in a circle because this is not a circle of a team. This is more. This is a circle of friends. And this is an ongoing friendship. The heart is our heart. It's our leadership there. And the crown, they said this is to do with femininity and resilience. So they stood there. They expressed themselves. Each drawing, each picture, each color resembled something to them. Now, Belbin's nine roles, also Belbin did the same thing, developed eight, and then at the end added the ninth after practicing it on actual teams. And Belbin said that how successful is the team, how they assume these roles, how failure is the team is related to high co uh, conflict within the team members and not assuming these roles. So I've divided them, as you can see, to three clusters. The first one is action-oriented roles, then the people-oriented roles, and the thinking problem solving roles. They are detailed for you in the paper. Now let's look at the findings. Um, most of the team roles were practiced and demonstrated through the classroom interaction. And the team roles, weaknesses and strength, actually what Belbin said, I've seen it, it's actually happening in real life. There was a large number of students, they were democratic and flexible with each other. But then at the same time, they actually hated any criticism, which coincides exactly with what Belbin said about the plant role, which is a person who puts ideas and strategies. So that's exactly as he said. And then the team members demonstrated more positive behavior than actually negative behavior. To sum that up, I came up with this process. If we pass through it, you will come up with the inputs is you're putting your teamwork, all the individual work. You go through the process of adopting those two models that I have actually introduced you to and practicing them in actual real life. Automatically, the output is going to be high performance and more effective team. Uh, and also, it's going to show you increase in the team creativity and a culture of collaboration, more innovation. In conclusion, the effect of adopting Tuckman's model and Bebel's nine team roles on teamwork performance effectiveness showed the following results. The first thing, a utilization of both models assisted the students for effective performance in their classroom activity. The second, it contributed to achieving high marks in the students' final course assessments. Also, the team ground rules were actually very good in order to help them have a smooth flow. Using those models in the classroom was very rewarding. It was rewarding for all participants, the students and the educator. And the model fosters a collaborative culture. Thank you very much. Thank you.